narrowing your list. In this lesson you're going to narrow down your list of hot opportunities to just three. You will then take those three hot opportunities into module two where Mike will be showing you how to find and contact suppliers for those hot opportunities. You are now going to evaluate your opportunities and choose your best three to move forward with. However, that does not mean you discard the rest. They might well be future products for you. If they match all the criteria, then they are going to be viable products for you moving forward. And you have worked hard to build this list, so there is no need to discard it. Before contacting suppliers, we can only estimate the gross profit margin. The estimation is not especially accurate, but is more a way of helping to compare your products. You might find once you contact suppliers that it might be higher or lower, and you'll discover that in the next module. You are going to use the BSR, the reviews, and the estimated gross profit margin to narrow down your list. You will learn various methods, but it will come down to you making the decision, whether you want to go with a more competitive product with more sales volume, or vice versa. More competition does mean more work and potentially cost to rank your product, but a higher number of sales once the product is ranking. And if you go for a less competitive product, it means it's going to be much easier for you to rank your product, but also you might get less sales than one that's more competitive. So here we are back at our hot opportunity list, and I've added another two, three products, and I've also just sorted by category to start with. We're going to be doing some different sorting later. But what we're going to do first is, you can see I've shrunk down some of these columns so you can see the next two columns, which is estimated product cost and estimated profit margin. And to do that, we're going to go to a site called Alibaba. Now, Mike is going to be going into a lot of detail about Alibaba in the next module. We're just going to be using it for basic estimated product cost at this stage. So the site's alibaba.com, which is A-L-I-B-A-B-A.com. And when you get to the page, we're going to be using this search box here where you can see Super September, even though it's now October. You can see I've filled in the keywords. Those are the keywords I used to find the competing products. And we're going to take those and we're going to go to Alibaba and we're just going to paste it in and then hit search. Once you're here, you just want to, where you see this gold supplier logo and text, you just want to check that box. Again, Mike will be covering this in great detail later, but you just want to check it. And then you want to scroll down through the products until you find a product that matches. So if I actually go back and I open up the product, you can see what we're looking at. Okay, so I'm looking for something that's as similar to this as possible. So we've just got a normal one there. I'm going to keep going. It's a bathroom one. This one looks pretty similar. And what we're going to do is we're going to find a very rough estimated price of what the product's going to cost us. Now, when you look underneath the title of the product, you're going to see a price. And it will normally be a price range. And you see here it's US dollars, 398 to 450. And then under that, you're going to see 3,000 pieces, which is their minimum order, otherwise known as an MOQ. And again, we'll be covering that in great detail in module two. But for now, what they're saying is if you place an order of 3,000 pieces with this supplier, the product's going to cost you between basically $4 and $4.50. Now, we won't be ordering 3,000 pieces. You're going to be ordering less, more like 500 or 1,000. But it's giving us our first ballpark price. It's around $4. So I'm going to keep going down and find another similar product. And here's another one. You can see for this one, it's 2,000 pieces and they've just got a price of $4. So again, it's a rough estimate. Both the products we've seen have been around $4. I'm gonna keep going, see if we can find another one. Here's another one that's very similar. Now you can see they've got a price for a thousand pieces of $1.89 to $2.89, which is obviously quite a bit cheaper. So we're looking at the bottom end of about $3, and the most common price is $4 right now. And we're basically looking for four or five examples, and we're gonna take an average. So keep going down. It's kind of similar, but not entirely sure. Here's another one. We've got the two to four dollars again. And this one says it's made out of acrylic and we want stainless steel, remember? Now I'm keeping going and it looks like we're getting toilet roll holders now as opposed to a paper towel holder. One here, but it's wooden. So I'm gonna take an average of those three and say $3.50. That's what it's gonna cost us per unit. So I'm gonna go back to our workbook. And remember, this is a rough estimation. It's all about using the estimated gross profit margin. This is just the price of the product on Amazon minus the cost of the product. We're not including shipping, we're not including Amazon fees. It's purely for comparison purposes. So for this one, I'm gonna put at $3.50. Now, when you come to add yours, it will automatically estimate the profit margin for you, but basically it's 
minus 350, which is $21.45. Now you notice putting those numbers in is slid over this section. If you haven't realized already, you're gonna be able to slide this backwards and forwards. The information showing up with the colors on the right is actually gonna be for module two, but I just put it back to the beginning because we wanna be able to see, when we come to compare everything, we want to be able to see all of the columns I'm showing you here. So let's try the second one. I'm gonna open it up so we have an idea of what it looks like. You can see here it's 50 Jello shot syringes. So I'm just gonna take that keyword because that's the same one as I've got. I'm gonna go back to the search box, paste it in, and you can see it's showing a result. So we can actually just click on that. Check the gold supplier box again. It's not really a requirement to check the gold supplier. It just means it's a more reliable amount. So let's have a look. So I'm not sure what this means. US dollars, $1 to $2. I very much doubt that's for all 50. And I also very much doubt it's per syringe. So when you get a result that makes no sense, just carry on past it. So we've got another one here. And it's saying for 10,000 pieces, remember that's 10,000 syringes, 12 to 16 cents. We're looking at 14, 15 cents for that one. The next one's saying between one cent and 16 cents, which is a pretty broad range. So I'm gonna discount that one and carry on with the figure we had before. We've got another one here, 14 to 16. So again, it's about 15 cents. And yet another one, 12 to 16 cents. So I think we can say it's 15 cents, but obviously, it's 15 cents times 50, because for our pack, if we wanted to sell 50 of them, obviously we have to have 50 in the pack. So 50 times 15 cents is $7.50. So 50 pieces at 15 cents is $7.50. So if we come over here, we're gonna put estimated price, $7.50. Then the estimated profit margin will be $19.49. Okay, so let's take another look. So this is our soap dispenser. If I go back, I'm gonna copy the keyword and let's take a look what that shows us. Okay, so straight away we're seeing similar products. This one looks bigger and we're looking at about $6.50, which seems a bit high to me. Got another one here that looks more like our product. So three to five, so we're looking at $4 on average. It's another one, this is actually polished stainless steel. And we're looking at about $3.50. Gonna keep going down. We've got another one at three to $5. So I think we're looking at about $4 here. You can see that this is, looks like that bigger one again, and it's over $6. Got another one at four to 4.50. So I'm gonna take an average for this one at $4. We've got one more here at four to 4.50. So I'm gonna say this is $4. So go back to our workbook. Estimated product cost is $4. The estimated gross profit margin is $22.99. Okay, we'll carry on. I'm gonna do one more example because basically it's just a case of searching for products that look similar to yours, averaging out our estimated price and then adding it to the sheet. So we'll look at the next one, best rabbit wine opener. So if we go back here, the keyword was rabbit corkscrew. Now this might not show us enough results. The Alibaba search is not great, but let's take a look at what we see. Again, I'm just gonna click the gold supplier. So this looks kind of similar, it's three to $5. Again, another one, three to $5. Got a set here that looks a little bit more advanced, so we're gonna go past that one. This one's four and a half dollars to five and a half dollars. This is interesting, this looks like exactly our product. And there's no problem with you doing that, by the way. So again, it looks like the average price for this kind of product is about four dollars. Scrolling down a bit further, this one's a little bit cheaper at the bottom end, but again, it goes up to five dollars. So I'm gonna say it's four dollars. And I'm not just picking round numbers to make it easier for my subtraction. Remember, purely estimated. So our profit margin on this one is 22.50 again. Now I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna go out and fill the rest of these in. But I just wanna point something out quickly. You can see in the result number 10 here, it's a metal detector. And you can see I put the price in red because it's $90, it's above our recommended price range. When you get to the upper limit of $70, you can by all means go beyond $70, but you must factor in that the likelihood is your inventory is gonna cost you more because the product's gonna cost more. So that is definitely one of our criteria that you can actually go beyond. And it's basically going to a higher price than $70. But I'm gonna pause the video and go and fill out all the information. So I filled out all the information on all the products, but I just wanna highlight this one in red, the Bonsai Starter Kit. I couldn't actually find a supplier on Alibaba. Now, admittedly, I didn't spend too much time looking because this is more about showing you what to do as opposed to finding products myself. Now, if you spend time looking and you really can't find a supplier for it, then put it to the bottom of your list and ignore for now. And then once you've been through module two, you can always come back and go and take a look because you'll have more information about how to find suppliers. 
However, for the sake of this training, I'm actually just going to delete it to make it easier to see everything else. Now, at this point, it becomes more subjective. It becomes more about your choices and your decisions. Up to this point, everything's been specific. It's been within certain BSR ranges, been within certain review ranges or price ranges or weights, etc. Everything's been specific. But when you get to this point, it's more a case of you choosing what kind of product you want to go after. So, although you're going to be looking at reviews, and a profit margin and at BSR levels, you also want to take into account the product itself. For instance, if you were particularly keen on wine, if you're a wine connoisseur or something, then the corkscrew might appeal to you more. Or if you're an outdoor type, if you like camping, then maybe the self-inflating sleeping pad might be more interesting to you. So you have to bear that in mind along with everything else. And it is subjective. It is your choice. And you can pick your three products in three different ways. You can pick one product that you're absolutely passionate about, even though it might not have the best figures. You can pick one product which has got the highest profit margin, or you can look at a product that's got the least competition. In other words, the highest BSR number, lowest number of reviews. Remember, this is not a final decision. This is just about picking three opportunities that you can take into module two. You might get to the end of module two, apply everything you learn there, and realize that one of the other products could be a better fit for you. You can always come back and look at these products. So nothing's set in stone at, at this point. The main thing is you do not get stuck trying to choose these three opportunities and going backwards and forwards, second guessing yourself. Take a look, pick the best three that you think are the best three for you right now, and then you can move on to module two. Say for instance, one of the products you want to choose out of the three would be your highest estimated profit margin. You can just look through the list, but you can also go up if you put your mouse cursor over the N above the column for the estimated gross profit margin, you'll see this little arrow appear. Just click on it and you want to sort from highest to lowest. So you want to click on sort sheet Z to A. And now all our products are listed in order of the highest estimated gross profit margin. So you could do something as simple as just choosing the one with the highest profit margin. Or you could look at the first two or three and pick something else to decide between the three. Now in this case you can see there's quite a big difference between the first and second and third. So I am actually just going to select this product, the self-inflating sleeping pad, as my top product. And what I'm going to do to distinguish it so I remember which one it is and I don't get confused with it appearing again is I'm going to select the line by clicking on the two. I'm going to click on text color up here, select red and then I'm also going to bold it. So there you go. I've selected one of my three hot opportunities to take into the next module. Now you can take this a bit further. You could actually look at the top three estimated profit margins, see which had the lowest reviews, even which had the lowest estimated cost for a smaller inventory outlay. It really is up to you, but I'm going to choose this one as one of my hot opportunities. Remember, your choices are not set in stone. You can always come back and change it later. Then maybe we might want to select a product that has the least reviews because less reviews generally means it's going to be easier to compete with. So we go to the J column, click on the arrow and sort by low to high. In other words, A to Z. So sort sheet A to Z. And then we could again, we could look at the top three from this point of view. The top one is the Jello Shot syringes. So the primary product has the lowest number of reviews. And then if we look at the first competing product, it's actually got the highest number of reviews. And then the th the second competing product, it's got 53, which is again low. We could look at the next one and OK, it's got more reviews than our first product, but also it's got less reviews for the second competing product. However, the third competing product has a lot of reviews and the same can be said of the third product. So I might decide, OK, there we go. I'm going to pick this one because it's got the lowest number of reviews, comparatively speaking, across the primary and competing products. So I'm going to select red and I'm going to bold it. So we've got two of our products. Now I'm obviously doing this very quickly. You can look at this in more depth by all means. Remember it is up to you. You could have just chosen the top three highest estimated profit margins. That's completely okay. You can also have chosen the top three with the least reviews. Again, that's okay. But the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort by BSR of the primary product initially and I'm going to go A to Z, lowest to highest because lowest means the highest number of sales. It's likely it also means the highest competition, but let's take a look. So the lowest BSR we have is in kitchen and dining for the rabbit core screw. And then we've got 510 in sports and outdoors and 515 in sports and outdoors. Now, I happen to know that 382 in kitchen and dining makes a lot more sales than 510 in sports and outdoors. Again, you could have always used Jungle Scout for this, but 
That's going to be my third choice because it's the product that makes the most sales out of all my products. So what I've done, I compared the top three estimated profit margins and chose one. I compared the top three BSR ranges, in other words, the lowest BSR numbers, and made a decision on one of those three. And then I looked at the lowest reviews, compared the top three, and again, chose one of those. Now, you should have more products than this to look at once you got to this point. And if you're not entirely happy with all of your choices that you ended up with, then, and module two hasn't started, then by all means, go back, search more pages, go deeper, go to 20, 30 pages or more. But when the module two training is available, we recommend at that point, you come back and select three products. Now, if you're not at this stage, if you're just watching this and you're not at the stage where you're, you found all your hot opportunities and you're going to evaluate them and module two opens, don't let it panic you. Carry on working through product selection till you get to this point. So what's next? So now you've learned how to narrow down your hot opportunity list to just three products. Remember, do not delete any of the other products. You want to keep them. And the next lesson you're going to learn about pattern searches. Action step, make sure you have narrowed down your list to three hot opportunities ready for module two. But that's it for this lesson. Take care.